Howdy, Biflo Bart here, and welcome. We are going to continue on with the Battle Royale project, since some people seem to like it. I'm not a big fan of Battle Royales, but, you know, for right now, we're into the cookie cutter mode, and at some point we'll start very, well, bearing it around a little bit and trying to make it a little bit more unique, if we can. So, I want to take a look at the menu system. The first thing I need to do is actually go into the menu. So we'll go to Maps folder and go to Lobby Map. So when we hit play, right now we just have a black background. There's nothing in it. Oh, I've got a character. Well, there's plenty of stuff in it. Um, connected players. We've got um, join map, find game, host game, all this stuff. You can pick your character. For right now, it's just this simple variation of these, and it does not change the um, the colors. This guy right here has, you know, they should all have three to four variations of them, and it'd be nice to be able to switch them out at some point. It's like, once you get to here, maybe have another button here and here, so that you can actually go forwards and backwards to perhaps say, uh, change out the skin color, but we'll, we'll, we'll see about that later. Not very important right now. So, what makes up this? We see our character on this little pedestal, and a light going directly on them, and black everywhere else. So, let's exit the game, and take a look at the widgets. The lobby widget. Tonight's trick of choice. Coffee and Orange Crush, and I'm going to drink my coffee. At least let my coffee get cold while I'm sitting here doing this stuff. So pretty much what this is telling me that it's all these different elements are here, and there is nothing else on the screen. So it's nothing we need to change right here on this at the moment. Because we look at the lobby map, we have nothing in here. Uh, if we look at the blueprint... We do have stuff in the event graph, so we have stuff there, but there's nothing physically shown in the map. So if we look at the characters, lobby characters, we'll notice that if we open this one, which is the master, well, there's nothing in the event graph. We got something in the construction, but if we look, we have the character here, and if we pan out, you can see that we have this guy, it's a spotlight. We have a point light, a camera, the character, um, the base platform that they're sitting on, and that's pretty much about it. And if we look at this character, we're looking directly at them, so that's what we're getting when we actually look at our, our character itself. So when we hit play, we're just seeing the character we don't naturally see the, the light or the camera. So we've got a spotlight facing towards them and the camera facing towards them and a point light shining straight down, more or less. Could have done that with a point, uh, point light as well, but whatever. So this is our, our scene. So if we add something else in here, um, what are we actually seeing for this? Again, let's hit Exit Game, Blueprint, Open Level Blueprints. Um, what's actually happening here? It's just spawning the actor in. And it's showing... And I don't think they're doing it as a render target. So the map, as you can see it right here, this is your player spawn. So you, you have no movement or anything else. So that's it. I mean, cool. That's easy enough to do. So what we're going to have to do is create something else that we can put into our scene here. If we want to change the way that the rest of the map works. A um, couple ways that we can actually do that. We can actually create a map in the lobby map and um, go about doing it that way. Or we can create something that we can just add into the scene here a single prop that might be encapsulated by the um, entire screen. And here's the problem though, is 
we do it that way, it will look fine as long as, you know, we can fit it to the main screen or we can just use lighting only to focus in on that area. So what we're going to need to do here is, I think I have a test map. What is in my test map? Oh, well, probably need to rename this map because this is a map I'm using for icons, um, for creating the icons. And all I do to create the icon is I throw an item in and I position it so that whenever you hit play, it's right here in the center of your screen. Your character doesn't actually, you don't need to move your character. You position it so that it's right here and then you take a screenshot and I'm just um, cropping out the image from the screenshot, fitting it to a 300 by 300 and that's how I'm actually making it. So simple. If you guys want, I'll do a video on how to make the icons, but more about that later. So file, new level, go with default, and we're going to go ahead and remove this guy. And let's do... that. We need to go ahead and get one of our lobby characters. And let's stick them in the map. Let's put them in at 0, 0, and 0. We'll get rid of that. And it doesn't matter about that. If we hit play, we're not getting that perfect 000 look at our character. But still good enough to get us um, going and creating a scene that we can work with. I could change the game mode and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for now, we just want to see if we can create something that will look good behind him. We can leave that base plate. We can leave the character unmodified. Um, of course, I want to do create folder, map, shit. And I want to put everything except for the lobby character in there. And why not put the character in a character folder. Now, what do we want for a scene, though? I mean, we're only going to have this little small area around the player. And we can actually build it and then create it as a single static mesh, mesh made out of multiple static meshes if we would like. So let's go to Polygon Battle Royale. And let's get meshes. We could use an environment piece, like a piece of flooring. We got dock, we got beach sections. Hmm. Rocks, road sections, grass circle. Um, so if we brought that in here and zero, zero, and zero, well, it's not representing our character well. So it doesn't matter if it's 100% perfect right now. So we can put our character right here on the this piece of grass. The light's still going to shine around it, and it's still going to be that. Um, in fact, actually, let's do file, new level, empty level, don't save, and let's do it this way. You know, I mean, if we hit play, we got nothing. We got a black screen, so let's actually take a look at it. Go back up here and let's get a lobby character. Throw it in here. Zero it out if we hit play. Um, let's actually put a player start in. And we need to rotate it so it's facing. Go ahead and just zero it out, and then pull it back. Let's go a little bit farther back. So 
about where the camera is. So there we have it. So now we can start adding some things into the scene and see how it looks using the existing lighting. So if we go in here and environments, grass circle, let's um, then hit play. So now we got our guy just standing there on a piece of grass, and that's fine. That looks okay. But we want some other stuff in the background as well. And it would be kind of neat if it is fading away and not being, a, you know, totally visible. Because we want the main focus to be on the character and not what else is going on. So we could do anything from a building. I'm just going to try a couple different things here. I know this isn't really what I want, but see the train's kind of fading around it. Not that it's a big deal, I could always make this larger and it would kind of flatten out some. Mm. Not a fan of it. It's not horrible, but not a fan of it. I mean, I have other buildings as well, but um, could also even put us in the building, but nah. Could try... You know, like a bombed out vehicle. Um... Doesn't look too bombed out from this angle. Um, it doesn't have to be all f facing a symmetrical way. Having a little randomness in there is not a bad thing. So we've got a destroyed tank there. Let's see, maybe like some fences or something else just to kind of build up the scene. Was there just like a, a fence? We've got these, you know, the range section stuff. A chain link fence. Technically, we could put like the fence set up to where it looks like the tank was going through the fence, then got blown up. But I was hoping for like a wooden picket fence. Hmm, cinder block wall. And broken wall pieces. Let's actually see how this is going to look. It's like the tank was trying to go through the wall, got part of the way through, and just got blown up. So, and could always just throw in some other blocks. Looks like they came off from the wall. Just some random stuff, you know. Just to add to the overall of the scene. You know, that's something. I think. 
all that needs to shift over. It's a little better. You might could add like particle effect, some smoke coming off of the tank. Need other stuff in the foreground as well. It's just the grass. It's just a little bit too too bright from the light, but we don't want to dim the light on the the character. We want them to still be quite visible. Definitely got to have other things just to kind of fill it in some, you know? Particle effects. Got some fire and smoke. Can't really see the smoke, though. Um... It's kind of black smoke. I don't think the smoke's going to work too well. No, because smoke is black smoke, and that's just not going to work. So, what else can we add in there? Not bad, but it needs to come down some. Eh, adds a little something to the terrain. Not bad. Usually what I would say is, if you're trying to build a scene out that's going to be seen quite a bit, then you want it to be interesting but you don't want it overdone. It's like, why would there be that pallet of stuff right there? Why would it be there? You know, have a little bit of sense to what's going on with your, your scene. You know, you can sit here and just tweak around with stuff all frickin' day long. I kind of want to rotate it around a little bit. Still want more detail over here of something, you know, just barely visible on the map. Um, maybe part of the wall system. So you can see it continues on there. So we can do that over here, see if it shows up any. Probably won't, but that's okay. Even if it shows just a little bit into the light, then, you know, we might be able to see it. Plus, we want it to kind of extend off, just in case, for some reason, someone's playing in 8K or 4K or whatever, and the camera's just not representing it right on full screen. Still need some, something in the, the foreground. Put like a, a weapon, right? You know, some guns laid out. Let's go with... Since it looks like, you know, the tank's been destroyed. And it's on fire. We need, uh, let's see... An RPG that actually, quote-unquote, destroyed it. 
Make sure you just rotate it back this way. And actually, no, let's do it this way. And this way. And see if we can make it look like it was resting up here. You know, I don't like that. Um, let's put it in the right place, Dum Dum. Let's have it leaning, like, right here. Ninety, then we'll do it this way. And we'll tilt it around a little bit. And let's lean up our rocket right there. Make it look like they were ready for the next one. And we'll just throw another one. It looks like it was laying on the ground. And we gotta have, let's say, eh, a rifle or something set up. Also kind of looking like it was leaned up. So we'll do 90, 90. So we'll put it right there. Could uncheck snapping. And got to have a, a belt for it. She do it ninety. Ninety. Because technically, you probably want to have a belt in your weapon. I don't remember tilting it any, but whatever. Well, it looks like it's just leaning there with the uh, belt, uh, belted box sitting there with it. However, the two of them need to move over. Like so. Little better. It's still not perfect. Need more stuff in it. Uh, but the more stuff we're going to add into it, uh, the greener it's going to get. You know, you don't want to oversaturate, but then again, you don't want to undersaturate. Um, yeah, frying pan. Just want something else to add to the map here. Hit escape. I'm just spitballing right now. Just, eh, I don't like those. Trying to come up with shit to put in here. Yeah. 
that's better. Still want something along here, but then again, we have to imagine we're going to have buttons to consider and that kind of stuff. So, let's do this. We need create a folder, map shit. Move the fire. No, we don't want to move the fire in there. We want to move our lobby character in there because that's the only real map related shit we got. And our player start. The rest. Huh. We can't add the fire in with that. But we can't do that. These are all static meshes. And. No, they're not, because the, the weapons, these are skeletal meshes. So let's get rid of those, because we don't want to mix skeletal weapons, uh, or skeletal meshes with static meshes. So, we'll grab all these. We know they're all static meshes. Um, are you sticking into the ground? Yeah, you are. Okay. So... In theory here, what we can do is right-click, convert actors to static mesh, go to my assets folder, gadgets for now, and ch backdrop. But these are static mesh. SM underscore CH underscore backdrop. So, in theory now, that's all a single static mesh. Need to look at it. We don't care about collisional stuff and all this stuff. It's all delightful. Everything should be good. We need to ensure, though, that we look at our lighting. Materials. Collisions. Eh. We will see how this looks. Save it. And let's go ahead and save all. CH test map so this is our character test map and it can go into that folder because this is not something that's going to get bound up later so if we go to our lobby map now and we hit play we got our character and this little piece here what we can do is now go into our lobby characters. In theory, I believe this is actually the master. So if I came in here and removed this, for some unknown reason, Spotlight is attached to that. Why is it attached to that? So let's drag it there, and let's compile and save. We've just broken it off, and let's see if it made a difference. Doesn't appear to. So, now if we look at any of these right here, for some reason 2 did not change. 2, 3, 4, and 5 did not change, neither did 1. But if we look at child 6, it says we need to save it. Open full blueprint editor, Schmackola. See, it is no longer attached there. Um, what about 10? Oh, screw you. Go to the damn full blueprint. It's not attached. What about 1? And it's not attached. So, yes, these are all being treated like child actors 
from the first one. We remove that um, spotlight from being anchored to something else. So let's go ahead and hit save all. For some reason it didn't say I needed to save this one even though I can see the changes. So, But it shows that they're all inherited. So that's good. So what we can do here now is go to our lobby character 1, prove that again, we take this cylinder and we can see that it's at negative 100. So I'm going to delete it. Compile and save. Now look, it's gone from all of them. So let's hit save all one more time, even though we only want us to save three of them. Hit play, see now they're hovering. So that's good. We can now add our new static mesh. Let's go back to our gadgets folder, select it static mesh, go right here, add component, static mesh, and we'll just call this backdrop. And it needs to be at negative 100. And that's not low enough. Okay, so let's lower down. Like so. So now if we hit compile and save, go back to our lobby character, see it's there for all of them. So whenever I hit this, we have it in the backdrop. And now when we're hitting this, it only looks like the character is changing, but the backdrop stays the same. Isn't that lovely? I think that's awesome. How y'all doing? Okay. What else do you guys think is actually annoying the crap out of me? The fact that it's absolutely quiet in here. I can't stand silence in a game. So let's exit game. That's good. We can always come back later. And all we have to do is edit the test map and we can make the new uh, background and then overwrite that right there and create our new backdrop to suit what we want anytime we want so we can have that backdrop to it. Awesome, right? I'm not going to change the style of the menu just yet, but we will get there. So these icons, if you guys want these icons or you're using these two asset packs, then uh, let me know and I will make them available. They're uh, PNG files. They're sized at 300 by 300 and I think they look okay other than being white backgrounds. Eh, I probably should have chosen a different color background but it are what it are and I done, I done it already. But I have the map. I can always go back and recreate them at any time. And again if you guys want to see a video on how I did it then let me know. It's super simple. Okay so music. We got sounds here, but we need music. I already have one mostly picked out. May or may not be great. Just gotta remember which one it was now. Uh, the thing is, there's two ways of doing this: adding a background music to your main menu. Definitely want to have it just nice and quiet. You don't want to be blasting out someone's eardrums so that um, they turn the volume down. Then when they get in the game, they have no volume in the game. So you want it to be the game to be played at the normal, you know, the audio playing at a normal level and the music just be less offensive loudness level wise. Um, Now, the music that I'm using comes from a uh, royalty-free website. It's uh, Technoax. And I kind of like this one. It's in MP3 format. So here's where you have your, your conundrum. Do you want to keep your file size low and run it as an MP3? Or do you want to go through the issue of converting it to a WAV file that it gets to be a larger file size? You have two different options there. The quickest way is to go with the largest file size way. And this one's called Coming Home. So I'm going to look to see if I've already got it converted. And 
Yes, I do. So with that, all I have to do is, is just drag the wave file in here, and it's there. It'll take the first time you put it in here. It'll take a little while to queue up. Kind of a, a passive thing. So let's go ahead and save all. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a queue for it. That's actually somebody else's menu. I'm just kind of cleaning it up. I'm going to go through and rearrange a few things. Um, I do like the way it looks. Um, I, I do want to put my functionality in with it as well because for those of you who don't know how to get your own IP address, when you're trying to say if you want to join my game, I would have to provide you with my IP address and you'd have to put it in this location here. Using my other method, which is the, um, the Steam method, does require you have Steam running in the background, but instead of it just saying connected players here, you could actually see the actual game name. So it's a little variation. Um, I'll show you a quick example of it. So, you know, I have the simple multiplayer Steam template that I sell on the side. Can't put it on the marketplace because it uses uh, third party plugins. So they don't like that, but whatever. Um, my usual menu system looks kind of like this. It'll load in just a second. It's just a sample project that I've got. You see, it's, it uses the Steam username and avatar. In the upper right-hand corner, the Steam thing pops up here. Uh, if you want to play single player, you just hit single player and you go right in and do your thing. Um, go back to the main menu. If you want to play multiplayer, you can either find a game and if nothing pops up right here, you just hit Find Lobby. It'll search and it'll show the game name. You know, and it'll show a ping, but the ping won't come back correct because it's using a developer app ID, which means if you don't have a Steam app ID, which costs a hundred bucks, um, then yeah, you you just won't be able to, to have your own unique ID for the game. But if I click on Host, I can, you know, please enter a server name. I could put whatever I want in there. This is Steam based. Uh, this one right here. So then you can see that's why I've got the Steam username and avatar. If you were playing it, it would show your Steam username and avatar. Because so you just have to have Steam running in the background. And because it's running on the, uh, the, the Steam app ID, it'll show up that you're playing Space War on to any of your friends. So then, you know, once I put in a server name, I hit make. And now anybody else can search and find that and be able to join me so this is an older version of, that, of this project oh no I'm red yeah it's definitely an, an older version I don't have the emote system in this one but yeah so that that's how my my menu system works is you go into it and you can actually see the actual server name. So I'll probably add some of that functionality in here so that um, instead of it being this method, I'll have an optional method for Steam. So like whenever you're doing a host game, um, you can choose LAN. Uh, we just add in a second one, change it to Steam functionality, or use Steam or whatever else, and go that way. So, Dare Music. I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to create a queue and let the name ride. Now, with this guy, this little egg, I'm going to click on here and it's going to loop forever. Forever and ever and ever. I don't have to worry about attenuation because you're not going anywhere. Um, I can add in uh, volume control. That's one way to do it. Uh, I can also try to attach it in here. Um, so let's let's actually put this in. We're not going to mess with the pitch, but let's change the volume to point two for now and see how that works. Save, close. We don't need our character open right now. We do need our 
level blueprint. And since this is running off of begin play, we need to add this in as well. So we're going to make a little bit of room. And what we'll do here is play sound at location. We're just going to select coming home cue. Now we do also have control of the volume here. So I just want to see how this is going to work. Sometimes adding it into the sound cue works. Sometimes it just doesn't care. <laughs> so uh, on the volume, at least. So let's hit compile and save playing. It's really low, but it needs to be less low. So make sure you can control that with the um, the level blueprint. And this was initially set to 0.75. I'm going to put it back at a default level of one, and I'm going to make the changes within the blueprint. All right, so you can see it's much louder. actually not bad volume level wise so let's actually just go in here and I'm going to change the volume to yeah, let's put it at 0.6 and let it ride at that so it's not quite as loud but you can hear it you know it's there to me that's good Later on, I would also like to add some more functionality to the menu, like um, disable music or um, whatever, you know. See, so if I do the Steam functionality, then you won't need the set name. You know, you could put, like, uh, my name is Fart Knuckle. It's set name. I need to remove that, because you don't need to see that. And only the server sees it. The client doesn't. But, you know, now that I've changed my name, I can technically see that in there. So if I do two players, new pie, and let's use this guy, Red Nick, set name, and this is the server, but Ox Muffin. So, Buttocks Muffin is the name of the server. Set. See, it's showing on both. So, I need to get rid of that. Um, let's see. Uh, Buttocks Muffin needs to be. I want to be pretty. There, I'm a good girl. So, I'm going to host game. I'm going to go with the Sinti Island map. Minimum players is two. Screw it, we'll make it LAN. Host game. For some reason, it restarts the audio at this point. So now the client needs to find session. Here we go. Game found, joining server. And it restarted the music again. But not for the server, only for the client there. So now when I hit load level, it'll actually go into the map. takes a couple seconds. I've got a playable version of this linked in the Unreal Engine 4 general chat section. Alright, so I did add in the starting island. There's no weapons. You can slap each other around. Nothing will happen. You can't kill each other in here. Even if I put weapons out here, you could get them, you could shoot each other, nothing. And it'll wait for a little bit, see if anybody else is going to join, and then I slap you. Um, yeah, then once it gets past that time up, it will do a countdown and start the map. Since this is a small map, I chose not to use the airplane drop, which does work. Um, I also chose not to... Um, use the circle because again it's just a small map there's really not all that many places to actually hide so just get in there and blow each other brains out 
last man standing. For a larger map, you can see here we got our countdown. Uh, for a larger map, yeah, I like the, the circle, stay in the radius, that kind of stuff. And I like the airplane start point. So there, it teleports you to your new start location. And you can roam around, find weapons, sprint. Um, again, I need to address the camera angle situation. I don't like the camera angle. But you can go into first person, grab a weapon, and go hunting the other player. Let's see. What do we have around here? Huh. Grenade launcher. Not like a bare chested dude running around with a grenade launcher. Tab key opens up your inventory. I don't have anything extra in my inventory, but let's go over here. And I know there's a pistola hiding in that building. And another building over there, but whatever. Again, I don't like the camera angles. We got the pistol. So all these camera angles will change. So you can hold two long guns and one handgun. Sorry, if you crouch, um, it slows your movement speed down automatically. Um, let's see. I think there is a... Yeah, we can go through here. Another riffle over here. G36 and some ammo. Change over to G36, load it up. Yeah, this is kind of like, I've had a lot of requests for the Battle Royale stuff. And yeah, so I, I grabbed the um, Battle Royale asset pack from Cinti and the Battle Royale template from the, uh, the Marketplace. And started combining the two. Yay. I did fix the collision with the water over here. There was a problem with the collision of these beach pieces. So that if you actually tried, and when I was doing the parachute version, if you parachuted in the water, yeah, you were just stuck. Still need to come back through and add um, either a kill effect to the water or something to keep players from just going over here and hiding behind this rock underwater because, you know, there's no underwater breathing. And just staying here until everybody else kills themselves. You can see the number of players still alive in the upper left-hand corner. See, my name is Redneck, and over here, my name is Buttocks Muffin, and still see the number of players alive. Kill the other player, and their body freaks out, but whatever. Um, you placed number one. The other shows you placed number two. Better luck next time. Well played, and it automatically goes back to the lobby. So it works. Everything works great. Um, except for the camera angle is what really bugs me. Again, you can just come back in here and change your character. And I'm going to host game. Land. We're going to use the big one. Again, two players. And host game. Oh, you could also set it to be single, so it's just you, or a duo, or in a group, you know, like a team. So as soon as he joins, you'll see the extra person name show up over here, and it'll... There we go. Refreshed. Low level. I did a, a development build on it just to to get it tested out. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so here, you see you're running around. This is the starting zone. Amply named. I have not fixed the body armor yet and the helmets. So they're not included in the normal map. So you can see it's like in his head there. Backpacks do work, but I haven't changed the models over yet. The drinks, same thing. They work. I just haven't changed the models over yet, so I don't have the correct models. And if you pick up and put on another helmet or another armor piece or whatever, it gets rid of the old one. So you can see we're still waiting for players to reload. 
all the animations work for reload. It's all replicated. All works lovely. Um, let's grab the anaconda. And like I said, in this part, you can shoot each other all you want to. Nothing happens because it's not an actual combat system. So now, poof. Uh oh, I forgot to change the speed of the airplane. Um, yeah, I modified the speed of the airplane for using it on the smaller map, and I forgot to change it back. Maps. Nope, that's not what I want to use. So this is the map here. So I don't have to worry about going through all the other stuff. I can just go right into testing here. Um, yeah, I modified that airplane just because I wanted to try to use it on that small map, and it just, I just didn't like it. So our plane is big map. By default, we'll put it back. That that's a variable that I put in there. Um, So here we can actually just, by going directly to the map, we can bypass all the other stuff. And see it's game starting in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So there we go. Plane's working at normal speed again. So now once you get into the circle, and now you can jump. Yay. And you can jump. I do have this line trace that I need to get rid of. It's simple to get rid of it. So I can see that the other person is falling right over there. <laughs> I can see their line trace over there in the sky. Yay! You can move your character. I'll add parachuting in or glider or whatever later on. So yeah, this is a big map. It has nothing in here. I may actually modify this map since, you know, why not? Add a water basin in. You know, like some ponds, add some other building assets in here. Um, as it is right now, you can see the zone is coming in. Let's go to you. And we'll actually run towards the other zone. You can see it is moving. You can't mistake the fact that, oh, yeah, is that the zone closing in? Or, uh, no, you, you can't mistake that. You, you definitely know that that's the zone coming. And it shows in the upper left-hand corner, zone is moving. And it'll stop at some point, and then you'll get a countdown in that same location saying that it'll start moving. When you actually get outside, let's actually sprint, move faster here. Uh, when you get outside of it, there'll be some post-process effects to go on. Look, so you can see, post-process is kicked in. Everything looks different, and now you can see my health bar is going down drastically. I'm never going to run fast enough to get back in, and I'm going to die. Oh. Better luck next time. So, it works. But with this map here, it's like, ugh, so boring. There's nothing here. The starting zone is way the hell back over there. So this is where you're at. God, i got to move this camera speed up. So this is the actual starting zone. You can see, starting zone. And then you go to the airplane, then you can teleport in, or you, you just fall to the ground. But these buildings over here are very generic. They get the, the job done, but... Yeah, it's not going to work for what we want to do. These buildings over here... Yeah. See, there's not a whole hell of a lot of pickups. I mean, that's it. <laughs> for this big, huge map, that's all it is. And we need to get rid of the armor because they're not useful. Because I haven't fixed them yet. And the melee weapons are definitely broken also. It says foliage, but it's box brushes. It's not foliage. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, houses, we can get rid of them.
What? Yeah. Not all. <sighs> yeah, so instead of actually just modifying this map, what I'll end up doing is just going back through and just making another map. It, it's not that difficult to set up a new map to have the stuff that you need. Um, if you're going to use the plane, then you need plane controllers. Let's see, spawns. Uh, this map has three. So three different locations where the plane can spawn. There's one, two, and three. So they're right here in the air. And you got final checkpoints. You'll add three of those in. You can add as many as you want in. But I'm assuming that what those are is the actual... Well, let's take a look. Nothing there. So let's all it there and it'll actually load to where the uh, thing is but there's really nothing in the blueprint it's actually referenced somewhere else as part of the zone so put three of those in there just an average you can put more if you want um, plane spawn point right there also and you'll need the um, starting zone spawn points which are these guys right here that um, you put in your little starting location or starting zone. The reason why you have your starting zone and you have stuff in here is because you don't want your players out here to pick up your weapons. Because what I found out is um, do this, don't save because I screwed some stuff up there. Um, if you pick up the items then they're gone when you pick them up they they're they're just gone they don't respawn there's no respawning health points uh, you can't go back to the same whatever it's just not going to be there so to prevent people from just stealing up all the cool items while they're waiting for the battle to start you have a starting area you'll lock them in there first so they can't actually get to the playable zone and i kind of figured that out by doing the um demonstration map I just modified the demonstration map from Cindy Studios so that um, yeah players could run around here but with it actually doing that um, it kind of sucked and yeah now the trouble is if I want to test a spawn location which I had problems with um, one of the spawns where it would actually fall through the frickin um, container because there was something wrong with the the collision mesh on the container and that kind of annoyed me and I couldn't fix it and with it set up to not use the airplane spawn and this is your little starting island right here uh, whenever you start playing even in single player look it spawns you right here on this island and you see I put blocking volumes all around the damn thing to keep players in so now you can't get out there and if I do blocking volumes on this then I'm probably going to put the blocking volume I'm gonna to have to put one so if somebody wants to walk out here on this bridge you kinda of wanna let them get out there you don't wanna block them from being able to do that but if they wanna come out here and be a sneaky little sniper which makes things terrible I know I'm moving around kinda of fast here but um, whereas I could have just put one blocking volume at water level just to keep them out of the water but I'm going to have to do a blocking volume that goes from here across and it's kind of hard to put a complete block on here so I just have to have a blocking volume that's going to go across here maybe from here to here and then I don't know I'll probably just do one that goes from the bridge straight across to here and then here across here you know just kind of make do you're still going to have some water areas where there is blocking volumes or I'll end up with 30 friggin blocking volumes in the level to kind of keep players in because you don't want them in the water because you know if you leave room for someone to be a douche knuckle they're going to be a douche knuckle they can come right here hide in the water and you know camp out wait for everybody else to finish killing each other and there's only one person left running around where the hell is he 
Yeah, he's over here hiding, waiting for you to do all the friggin' work so he can just come up and snipe your ass while you're pissed off. So if you can avoid that, then, you know, that's always a good thing, right? So the first thing I thought of was creating a... like a water volume or something that actually... As soon as you step foot into the water, you start taking damage. And that's probably the easiest thing to do because I can actually come in here and put it in the map and bring the elevation of the top of it to about about equal where the top of the water is. And that's what I will do. Um, I try to kill volume. Um, you can also go into... Uh, let's see. Your kill Z base from zero kind of need to know where the level of things are because if you look at details of this it's at negative 30 where that pivot point is so let's say grab a plane and drag it next to where you want it to top out at now I can bring my camera speed back down So let's get it to where here. But the trouble is with that kill volume. Yeah. See, it's a small map. I've changed the camera angle again, uh, camera speed again. But if I did use that, oh, damn it, where'd you go? clicking on the water. Um, hang on, just a second, let me click on this plane. See, so I'm at negative 135. So let's just try it at negative 140 for my kill Z volume. And then come back into the world settings and put this at negative 150 for the kill Z. So this is the whole map. I mean, there's not much there. Just got one big terrain mass that's actually being the, the floor or the bottom of the ocean. This is where I set up my little miniature island for your starting point. And that's the actual footprint of the map there. This is the whole playable area. It's not exactly square, but like I said, I'm going to keep trying a couple different things to try to figure out how to register a, a way of killing the player for going off into the water um, or causing damage. I still got to look at their, their damage system. So you got the shooting range over here. You know, one of this, you know, I, just keeping this demonstration map in here for now, just because I don't want to take time to actually completely build a map right now. I want to build the other stuff, get all the stuff working, and then focus in on maps. Because what I'm actually picturing for a map is um, something the size of the big plane version, but creating a port section and um, having. I, I'm really, really, really considering adding in the. Um, the Polygon War pack because it also adds in ships. You get a submarine, you get a destroyer, and a cruiser, and uh, some landing craft, which I'm not really worried about landing craft so much, but uh, and the World War True tanks are cool as well, plus you, know, you got more characters if you want to add those characters in, but there's also more particle effects. Um, but what I was kind of envisioning was actually creating a port section. Maybe using like, um, you know, t well, some of the assets from this and, the, and that one. Creating a port where you've got like the two ships docked, you know, maybe, maybe not have access to the ships, you know, getting on them, off of them. But um, having a port area... And then, not far away, having an army base, and then an air base, and then a, a town, and, and that kind of stuff. 
and just adding in some more stuff. You know, whenever I packaged this up, the um, the actual packaged version of this was not as big as I thought it was going to be. The um, the version that I have right now put on the um, Discord channel, links there on my Google Drive, is 269 uh, megabytes. So it's really kind of small. And for now, until I come up with a name for it, I called it Fart Night. Fart Night. F A R T. Fart Night. So with it, um, it works. I want to get some people to test it out, you know, maybe play it via LAN. If you got a brother or a sister that you want to you want to play with, because just playing with yourself is not always as much fun as it sounds. So this one got the same characters. Guess I want to feel pretty. I want to feel pretty. There we go. I want to be pretty. The redhead with the red dress. Um, you got that big map, and then you got the Sinti Island. Do it as land, 127. We'll do a minimum of two players, and screw it, maximum of two players. And I'm going to go ahead and host the game. So this is the version that's actually there on um, Discord. I will have the new version up. I'm actually now running a second copy of it. But, monkey... And I don't want to feel pretty. Um, sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. And let's find session. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. Now I can Alt-Tab, go back to the first one, and load a level. Like I said, this version's up now. I will change it to the newest version after I kind of get done fiddling and farting around. I may take a break here in just a second and then come back and fiddle around with some more, maybe add some more guns in. Uh, but, you know, it takes about 20 minutes for me to upload it because I got crap internet. That's why I'm, I'm streaming at 20 FPS and it's 720p. Welcome to my world. Oh, I guess you have to click on load level, dumbass. Um, yeah. So now it'll go in. You see, this is the old background. Hey. Now, I can alt-tab and go between. Oh, there we go. And sponge in the random different locations that I put in here. They're just basic sounds. I thought about, like I mentioned before, getting rid of the uh, the ghillie suit. When you crouch, and you're in the foliage. It can be a little tough to, uh... Actually, no, dumbass. Go to the other one. It's like, I know this bastard's around here somewhere. Did increase the jump a little bit, because... really, Yeah, see right there? just blends way too well. <laughs> I need to change these guys to where they're actually blueprints, something you can knock over. Um, I did have, have them set up to where on, on one project that um, if you hit X, it'll go into a, a C is crouch, and sometimes that's good enough to be able to see. But like I said, I don't like that camera. Hit X to go into first person view. And that'll work. Hit R to reload. Teach you to frickin' hide in a bush. Get that hit marker. Am I actually hitting? Yeah, I lost both of my mouth of my mouth. Oh shit, I had the grenade launcher. I <laughs> forgot I didn't have a regular rifle. Oopsie. <laughs> but yeah, that's the version that's currently up there right now. Um, 
Let's do save all, save selected. Um, currently, let's just get an overview of where we are here and take a break for a little bit. We'll come back in and yeah, so we'll go to the lobby map and we'll play from here. You can see this is our server here. We have music now. We have a new background. We'll be this guy. Anolikaj. And we'll host a game. On... If you're going to play it, play it on Senti Island. Um, until I get a chance to make another map to replace this one with. Then, um, yeah, it's gonna be kind of lame. Do land, we'll do two and two. I should speed things up. And host game. Speed Mr. Business Guy. Find session. And there, we got two players. Low level. So, this is the current version. Um, you guys want to add some other weapons in? There we go. We're on a starting island, but we got the uh, the countdown. Since I've set it at two and two, then there's no need for it to wait for other players to try to join, because it knows that this is the limit of them. So I'll grab the backpack, since it was right there. Yeah, you can make the motorcycle work. Don't really need working vehicles in this small of a level. All right. I still need to change the models on the um, the actual uh, backpack, the armor, and the helmets. I may not do the helmets, just simply because why is home dude bald? I thought I had all the hair fixed. Son of a bitch. One and select viewport. See, he's got hair here. Damn it, I thought I fixed all the hair. Um Lobby character Sub character. Three. Open. I damn sure I didn't add it in here. How about that shit? All right. Characters, attachments. It's a quick fix. See, I, I want to be able to add customizable things in later, like um, face masks or other accoutrement like beards and shit like that separately from each character um, that's why I've got everything the way it is right now is working so we need that we need that go to the mesh add component there it is we'll just call it hair we will attach it to the head we will rotate because we know it's wrong 90 Compost and save. Now everybody has hair. Yeah, I left that military male hair on the femaleish characters because it didn't really look that horrible. Kind of a fitting thing for them to have short hair if they're kind of going for the military look. Um, I'm going to grow here though. Probably change her hair later. It's currently synced up with she is number 8 which means that she is number 7 or 9. Hell, I don't remember. Nope. It was 9. Show the damn full blueprint, you son of a bitch. 
why would she be eight here? I thought the numbers were all off by one. It isn't. And I mean, nine. No. Shouldn't be ten. What the hell? Oh, motherfucker. See, that's the guy. She should not be number eight. This should be flower dress girl. Oh, sorry, that's a guy. Never mind. Duh, okay. Put the crack pipe away, dumbass. Alright, so should I put the uh, the war pack in here? Um, yes, it'll add more characters. More weapons. Eh. Um, or should I add in the heist pack? Well, the war pack at least will add a more of a more stuff like ships and it'll give me another good sized demonstration map where you could actually get in and make a big map and let me have things like a, a naval yard and an army base an air base uh, things like that so I think the war pack, even though it's based in World War II, I think that's probably our best option to add in to get more stuff. I'm not really concerned about the characters so much, but what do you guys think? Should I do it? Yeah, see, he's got hair. But yeah, these um, female characters... Now, she actually has a ponytail. You can't see it in that one, but um, yeah, I left the, the male short hair on there. It's kind of the military short hair. See, she, this army camouflage, you can actually get that camouflage on this guy. Just I left it at straight army greens because that was always my favorite uniform. Back many, 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 many moons ago. All right. We go ahead and take a break for a little bit. And then, um... We'll either do more weapons. Because the weapons we have in here... Uh, the only ones that I've actually activated in the game was... The grenade launcher. The two revolvers. We also have a Desert Eagle for an additional pistol but we have other rifles I've added in the scar but we have the FAMAS which is cool I like the FAMAS so the magazine goes back here it's a bullpup weapon um, got this guy which is kinda like a spiffy up AK with Pick rail handguards and full upper deck. It's yeah, futuristic AK. Got this guy is already in the game. That's a G36. Or did I actually put in the short version? I did. I, that, that's the long version there. Um, I've already got the short version. This one in the game. See, it's got a magazine where the other one did not. Um, let's see what else we got. Of course, the RPG, the shotgun will be coming later on um, because the developer of the asset pack is actually going to put in grenade launcher and sniper rifle functionality. So I'm not going to worry with it. This is like an M14, um, SOCOMish, EBRish, whatever. Uh, but yeah, M14 variation got looks similar to a Barrett 50 caliber sniper rifle the heavy snapper and looks like a Dragunov of course you got a magazine to put on there a scope to put on there things like that also have 
this guy, bolt action sniper. Again, would have to put a scope on there. I'd probably put a magazine on, so it would simulate that it has an extended magazine to it. Um, little guns. Again, there's no magazine on this one, but that's the P90. Got the um, HK PDW, the M MP7. There's no magazine in this one either. It would have a either a flush or an extended magazine would come down to around here. So we'll probably put the extended magazine in. But accessory-wise, we've got a vertical grip, red dot optic, um, silencer. We've got a right shield we could use if we wanted to. Uh, we've got a couple different scopes. And I got three different scopes, uh, including the red dot. And of course, we you know we get the RPG with separate rocket. So that's cool. And there was the um, the saw. So we got all the weapons we can add in here. And this is like a modern paratrooper saw collapsible buttstock, a short barrel. It would have a 200 round belt drum hanging from the bottom of it. This being a paratrooper version, it might have a condensed version, we'll say it has 100 rounds. But, technically speaking, the original saw right here could fit a 30 round magazine at like a 45 degree angle. So it had the ability to fire from a belt that hung from the bottom of the weapon that would hold, it's like a plastic canister that held 200 round belt inside of it with metal dis disintegrating links but if you didn't have the belt and the drum and all you had was access to 30 round magazines you could shove in a 30 round magazine and it would go bam, and that was it you got a quick burp of ammo in 900 to 1100 rounds per minute so yeah and of course we got flare gun not sure what to do with that just yet, but eh, whatever. Also have a smoke grenade, as opposed to just a regular frag grenade. So could do that. Th that'll come in handy. So we'll have a secondary grenade type. I've already got these grenades, which are the M67 baseball grenades. I've already got that in game. And that's a little scope that you would mount to the uh, grenade launcher, but, yeah. So, there's more things that I could add in. That's a, a different kind of buttstock you can put on if you want to on the machine gun. But, I got more guns. So, what do you think? More guns or another asset pack? This is not a deagle. For those people who call it a deagle, they need to have their testicles removed. It is a close proximity to a desert eagle. It is a desert eagle. Not a deagle. Desert eagle. It's two words. Alright. So, I'm going to go ahead and take that break now. And come back. I'm either going to add another asset pack in, or I might not add it, or I might add another weapon in. Um, probably like the FAMAS, the AK, not going to do the M14 right now, might add the other G36. So I got the FAMAS, full size G36, AK, the Desert Eagle, these are the choices of weapons to add right now, and possibly the, um, the machine gun, the saw. The Saw Paratrooper. Alright guys, so let me know something on Discord if you want to, uh, you have an option of what you want to see. Adding more guns to this asset pack, or adding another asset pack to this asset pack. So we've already got the Polygon Battle Royale, and the Battle Royale Template Version 2, and some stuff that I've put together to make in there. But, like I said, if you want to see the Polygon War Pack added in here, or just adding new weapons in. Let me know either way. Um, if I put the other asset pack, I'm going to end up putting in the, the guns from that asset pack in here. You got M1 Garand. You've got um, 
I think the infield rifle is in there. Maybe the Mosin Nagant in there. Uh, Tommy gun. Uh, P-38, 1911, and it was uh, a bazooka. Might be, a, uh, might be a couple other things, I don't remember. Um, it's been a while since I had that pack open. But, let me know, and we'll go from there. Alright guys, let me know in Discord. Like I said, I'm going to take about a 10-15 minute break, but you guys got to let me know what you want to see. Or you can let me know when I start to stream back up again. Um, all right, so I'll see you back in a few minutes.